Hello everyone, this is Saurian Target bringing you a special Carnivores mod showcase where we're taking a look at some more custom Carnivore skins created by my good friend RK. Now if you remember, RK created the more realistic skins for the Carnivores 2 animals that we covered a few weeks ago from one of his many skin packs. And today we're covering another pack full of Ice Age animals. Now this skin pack is technically part of a larger pack that includes a ton of dinosaurs. But A, total it's like 30 plus creatures, which is way too much to cover in one sitting. And B, the dinosaurs would not really fit thematically with the Ice Age creatures. So we're going to split them up and cover the dinosaurs later. Right now, we've got some beasts to check out. Now, in order to observe these creatures, we will need to take a trip to one of Dino Hunt Corp's remote Arctic facilities. See, these creatures are not 100% natural animals found on planet FMMUV-32. They are instead genetic amalgamations created by the planet's corporate owner. See, Dino Hunt Corp took the criticisms of their Polar Sectors tour very seriously, with the dull, ugly, and unintentionally frightening animals that customers simply did not care to hunt. In the wake of the immense popularity of the planet's uncountable dinosaur population, as well as the more interesting and exotic arctic animals being discovered quite frequently, the creatures discovered on the initial tour have simply lost interest to the public. Dino Hunt Corp still has an arctic tour, some clients ask. So Dino Hunt Corp decided to create their own versions of these classic creatures, using a mixture of DNA from the more evolved modern day animals of Earth, prehistoric carcasses found frozen in Earth's remote areas, and, of course, the base animals of the planet. As such, you are the first person getting to witness these creatures in the corporation's park. A focus group test, if you will. So, grab your parka and snow boots, and let's begin. Alright boys, listen up and listen good. See, the fact that we made it this far without getting caught is a miracle, so let's not waste it. We're gonna get in, get an animal, and get out. It'll be quick, see? In and out. You all know your targets, alive or dead, the fit a pretty penny for that galactic corporation. Let's go bag us some beasts. Alright, so up here we have these creatures sectioned off in a huge biodome for testing. None of them have been unveiled into the safari park or even into the wilds of the planet yet. They're all still relatively new developments. These assets show the most promise, so they're still under heavy security and testing in here. This biodome spans miles across, and is sectioned off into different areas with simulated environments depending on where we plan on releasing these creatures. We'll start off in the scrubland forest environment, where we house Megacerops, Metridiocaris, and Gastornis. But before we find any of those creatures, we'll take a look at the more, shall we say, mass-produced animals. Up in the sky, we have the classic Archaeopteryx. Now you may be wondering, what on earth is an Archaeopteryx doing in a world full of prehistoric mammals? Well, luckily, we're not on Earth. The little creatures are normally found far north on this planet anyway, so we thought we'd just continue the established tradition and not force the creatures from their homes, if we decide to release them. However, we are accustoming these particular beasts, who have a little more peacock infused into them, to the warmer, more forested, and less snowy climates up here. No snow and ice for these birds. And then down on the ground we have the walking feasts themselves. Pigs! These little creatures serve as food sources all across this biodome for our predators. This particular environment is the only one where carnivorous animals share living space with large herbivores, but the lone predator here is the Gastornis, who very much prefers these little pigs to his roommates. These pigs are, of course, completely genetically created to be an ideal food source. These pigs come with more body fat to help them survive in the colder environments where our wolves and bears live, as well as provide extra food percentages for the hungry animals who gobble them up. We thought, if Jurassic World can mass-produce sharks as food, then why can't we do the same with pigs? It seems like the perfect way to provide our carnivores with an easy food source and still give them the thrill of a hunt. And now for the big boys. The first one up is Megacerops. Clients didn't care too much for a brontothere covered in hair, despite the fact that it lives in a frigid environment, so we've opted to create a less hairy variant designed for warmer climates. We used the Bronto Terry as a base, then incorporated African elephant and rhinoceros DNA to give it its rugged exterior and promote even more healthy horn and tooth growth. 
We've also gone for a name change, as more of the older clients found Bronto Terry pretty hard to pronounce, and this is a great way to differentiate the two. These animals are some of the largest we have, both here in the park and in the polar sector itself. Only the mammoths get bigger. There are reports of a huge white beast that grows even taller, but there's no confirmation that it even exists. I mean, I've never seen one. Anyway, these guys are massive and use their huge Y-shaped horns to battle for territory. They're pretty much the only things that can hurt each other, so we don't have to worry about them too much. That thick skin of theirs is excellent predator and bug repellent and helps keep them warm when cold spells set in. The next creature we have in this environment is the Metridiocaris, or the giant warthog. Admittedly, Dino Hunt Corp's first Arctic tour was a tad rushed. We had deadlines to meet, and before we discovered the likes of Andrew Sarkis or Dodicarus, we had to do with what we could find. But perhaps marketing a wild boar was not the best thing we could have done for an alien dinosaur planet. However, we've decided to up the ante with this giant version. It's not quite the Metridio of ancient Earth. For some reason, we couldn't get the tusks quite right and keep the animals healthy, so we've just opted to keep more native boar DNA prominent, as well as some razorback and baribusa for personality and looks. These brutes are not hyper-aggressive, they'd prefer to just ignore most and spend their time digging up food, but when they get mad, they get mad. We wanted to give clients a little more of a challenge. We had one in particular scoff at the notion of hunting a wild boar up here. I used to pick them off with my dogs back home. Why would I travel across the galaxy to do the same thing without my dogs, he said. And fair enough, old timer. But I would not bring any hunting dogs after these bad boys. They may not have two pairs of tusks, but the one pair they do have can wreck shop. And now for our local predator and frequent pig hunter, Gastornis. This big bird is a personal favorite of mine. Our boys in the lab had a lot of fun putting him together. He's got a bit of canary, a bit of cassowary, a sprinkle of emu, a dash of parrot, a peppering of eagle, and a lot of diatrima. The terror birds on this planet are usually pretty bulky, and we wanted to make sure our gastornis packed plenty of bulk with some dazzling colors. They make for a great full body mount, if you can make it back alive with one. What they like to do with the pigs is run them down and then pin them under those muscular feet and bite right behind the head. It's brutal, but it keeps the meat fresh. You might see them stopping around to eat from the ground occasionally, and they're not after the plants. You see, these things have killed so many pigs that tiny remains of decomposing pig carcasses can be found all over the place. And these birds are just finding little scraps of leftover pig. It's really kind of gross. We might need to clean out this environment once this tour is done. Yuck. Okay, now don't tell anyone, but we've got a secret animal hidden over on an island in this environment. Our own Smilodon pack. We really don't have a good environment for the Smilodon yet. We are currently working on an authentic savanna-esque biome for them to run around in. But, you know, we got excited, and it turns out it's faster to build a Smilodon than it is a savanna environment. So, we're keeping them here until it's ready. This bruiser is the alpha male. He and a couple of females make up our little pack here. We've got hints of spotted cat DNA, like leopard and jaguar in them for better camouflage once their new home is ready. Those saber fangs he boasts typically aren't used in combat, just to sever important arteries once his prey is subdued. But we're currently working on building some tougher fangs for Smilodon they can use to attack. That should change their current scaredy cat reputation. And you know, this island isn't very big, and I haven't seen the other two females anywhere. Salt water is supposed to be highly irritating to these animals, to prevent their escape. And we keep them well fed, so they have no reason to hide or run. Hmm. We'll move on to the next biome. I'll put out a word to the guard that we might need to find a couple of missing Smilodon. Come on, we've got more creatures to show off. I'm in here, boss, and I ain't hearing anything. I think I'm just gonna get a drink. Wait, now I do hear something. Uh-oh. Sounds like... <laughs> guys! Guys, someone help! Guys! Ah! Boss! Someone! Anyone! Please help! These blades is after- Oh, oh, oh there's a pretty kitty. Wait, we're getting too close. <laughs> That's right, cats don't like water. 
Oh, oh no, oh no, you can swim. No, 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 no. This is our tundra environment. It's actually a healthy mix of tundra and taiga. The animals like to wander between the two depending on food availability and how they're feeling. And the immense size of this open area supports small herds of our animals. The first one up is the Megaloceros. <laughs> We used quite a few deer species to build this one, where Lucky Earth still has plenty of options to choose from. Fallow deer, mule deer, axis deer, Roosevelt elk, moose, a deer hunter's ultimate prize. The stags have impressive antlers spanning 12 feet across, used for scraping away snow and thrashing anything foolish enough to upset them, especially rival males during their mating season, also known as the rut. They're covered in soft, velvety fur with spots that don't go away as they age. Some great camouflage that our lab boys worked hard to get right. We wanted a build that handled elegance well, but also commanded the wilderness with power. And I really like what we've got. Of course, I'm a little biased, so on that note, let's move on to our next beast. The Woolly Rhinoceros. <laughs> Now, this guy was a very easy build, according to our lab boys. There's not that much to change in attempting to recreate a more Earth-like woolly rhinoceros here in the dinosaur planet. We really just opted for a darker, rougher, and thicker hide instead of the native's long and shaggy fur. Theoretically, if we release these guys, they should be able to breed seamlessly with the native rhinos and perhaps create an entirely new subspecies. We might even opt for a domestication route for some of these rhinos. It's really tough getting equipment on and off world, even if they're already stationed on the big galactic cruisers that hover over the planet. So for startup colonies or field researchers hoping to grow their own food, maybe some rhinos could be used to help plant the fields. We've attempted this in the past with dinosaurs like Stegosaurus, with mixed results at best. Maybe a more developed mammal will yield better results. But the rhino isn't the only woolly beast we've been working on improving up here. There's also the iconic mammoth. The king of the Ice Age winter, as our marketing team likes to advertise. Re-engineering the mammoth was about as difficult as the rhino. As in, not very. Thanks to some incredibly well-preserved earth mammoth carcasses, we've been able to implement some earth mammoth DNA into these guys to make them look a little more familiar to... You know, anyone who was around when mammoths were alive on Earth. Anyway, these guys don't differ too much from their native counterparts, and who knows? We might hope for the same results as the rhinos, with some crossbreeding or domestication happening sometime down the road. Another program we're hoping to complete with these mammoths is introduce them into Siberia on Earth. As we've discovered up here, mammoths can provide a great resource for food and warmth, but it's difficult to send help to people in need on Earth from here. So introducing herds, both for consumer use and just wild herds to roam around, on Earth would speed things up immensely in helping eliminate some poverty needs. But these are all just pipe dreams right now. We've still got a long way to go in completing these goals. And we've still got a couple more animals to check out. Let's head to our last environment, the frozen forest. Oh, this was a mistake. I'm sorry I tried to ride you. It won't happen again, see? <laughs> boss. Hey, boss. I got a couple of mammoths in front of me. It looks like a big one and a little one. Which one should I go for? Hello? Can anyone hear me? The little one's coming close. I don't want him to blow my cover. Yeah! <laughs> whoa, 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 whoa. Hey, hey, take that, you little... Oh, oh, no, no, no! Boss. Come in, boss. Anyone. If anyone can hear me, I've got a rhino out here on the rocks. He's cornered and got nowhere to go. I'm gonna wait until he's close to jump him. I wanna get a clean shot, see? Here he comes. I'm making my move. Oh, oh no! <laughs> A hauntingly quiet forest until the howls begin, this forest has to remain stocked with pigs to appease its inhabitants, our two most successful predators. The first one is a specialized version of wolf.
We used DNA from gray and timber wolves from Earth, combined onto the native direwolf base genome, and created a bigger, faster, and in all honesty, prettier wolf version. The dire wolves native to the dinosaur planet are huge and brutal, and feature somewhat familiar, yet still alien howls. Something that ups the scare factor, but just doesn't trigger that Earth-born thrill most older clients get from hearing a traditional wolf howl. With these wolves, we've created the best of both worlds. The size and speed and ferocity of the native dire wolves with the appearance and sounds of a timber wolf. Domestication, at some point, is a goal a lot of people want to see, specifically for hunting guide purposes. Sure, we have hunting dogs on Earth, but when hunting dinosaurs or huge prehistoric mammals, you might want a slight upgrade. Of course, that is a long ways away. I would not recommend petting any of these wolves just yet. Or our next and final creature living in these woods. <laughs> This huge cave bear is not something to mess with. Hybridized using the DNA from Grizzly, Kodiak, Polar, and of course, FMMV32 bear, this beast is about as ferocious as predators get. We're not too sure what the purpose of this one is yet. The lab boys had a particular look they wanted, and I'd say they nailed it, but at what cost? This thing has the DNA of the most powerful mammalian predators on Earth coursing through it. Right now, it is far too dangerous to hunt. We only have two, and there's no way we let them out in the wild as they are now. Just the two of them can bring down a mammoth on their own. I don't know if there's an animal out in this sector that can give them a run for their money. Until we know exactly what we want to do with this bear, we're keeping it under lock and key. I can't even imagine what would happen if the wrong someone got their hands on it. It would be a disaster. All right, all right, I got this little puppy dog in my socks. This'll be a piece of cake. Oh no, oh no, down boy, play dead, no! Ah, <laughs> oh, thank goodness I'm water. No one's answering the comms. What's that? Uh-oh, oh no, down bear, down bear. Oh, all right, who's next? You're mine, oh, oh no, 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 no! <laughs> oh, I just got a call from some of our guards. Apparently, there have been human remains found in each of these biomes. Nine bodies to be exact. None of them have been identified as ours though. Looks like someone came here looking for trouble and found it. I guess we'll have to beef up security around here. Alright, so there you go guys. A host of new Ice Age creature skins by my good buddy RK. If you weren't a fan of how the original carnivores Ice Age animals turned out, in looks or sounds, you have some brand new skins and calls for each of them. And if you want to include them in your version of Carnivore's Ice Age, I will of course provide a link in the description for you to do so. Just a fair bit of warning beforehand, for some reason, once you download the pack and install the animals, the pig and megacerops models are fully transparent, and thus invincible. I didn't read the warning on the pack download and found that out the hard way, but if you know how, putting the skins and sounds on the original models will resolve that issue. So which of these new animals is your favorite? Which one do you think is the best improvement over the originals? I think they're all fantastic, beautifully skinned and sounded, and I'm pretty partial to the wolf myself. Hearing those iconic howls ringing across the frozen forests sends chills down my spine every time I hear them. In fact, a couple of these creatures, the bear and the wolf specifically, would fit in perfectly in Carnivore's modern days. Maybe a modern days remake needs to be in order. But seriously, thank you guys for watching and for all of the support. I am forever grateful that you have helped turn this channel and community into what it is today. It's a ton of fun to be a part of, and as long as you guys keep watching this content, I will keep making it. Thanks again for watching guys, you are all truly the best, and I will see you guys next time. According to the lab boys, the lab boys, whoo, lab boys, lab boys, the lab boys tell me I need to get Cave Johnson out of my head and get me those pictures of Spider-Man, Parker. <laughs> <laughs>